event center but what everybody knows it as is the Thunderdome and it is the one place that Jerry Tarkanian says I'd rather not play here than any place else in the Big West Conference. Hello everybody, I'm Barry Tompkins once more with my partner Quinn Buckner. How good is UNLV? Well, they're a unanimous number one. They've won 28 in a row. They play about 10 people. They play for 40 minutes. They play end to end. They score 103 points a game, and if anything, their defense is better than their offense. They start with a couple of guys named Stacy Ogwin and Larry Johnson, and that's not a bad starting point. Well, they're a pair of aces. There's no question about it. You see the numbers right there. Stacy Ogwin, outstanding defensive player. Reminds me of Bobby Wilkinson from the 1976 Indiana National Champions. Larry Johnson does it on his own. He gets great position down inside. He's a very smart player. He'll wait for the ball to get there. Good patience. He plays around the basket. He's got a tremendous agility. And that's one of the things I like about Larry Johnson. The other thing I like about him, and when you talk to Jerry Tarkanian, this kid has tremendous competitive fire. He's in a game here playing, and the game is basically over. They're up 26 points, and you see Larry Johnson here fighting for the ball to get it to go back inside. That competitive desire is what makes Larry Johnson an outstanding player. And that may be what makes Las Vegas as good as they are this year, too. Let's talk about Santa Barbara for just a minute. They get half their scoring up front from Gary Gray and Lucius Davis. Yeah, and they're going to need that scoring. These two players have come along and, and produced outstanding numbers. Gray is tough inside, and they're going to need all of his scoring to Day. They need, more importantly, his positioning. But Lucius Davis has come on strong since last season. He's averaging 17 points a game. He has to get 17 and then some. I think that uh, these guys have to play a perfect game, Santa Barbara, because they're playing against a team that plays defensively as well as anybody I ever seen in college basketball. Yeah, they got to take care of the ball. There's no question about it. One thing to keep in mind, they did beat Las Vegas here at the Thunderdome one year ago. But that was one year ago. We'll be back. The 1991 Park Avenue Ultra, the perfect car for the 90s, and quite possibly the perfect car for you. Park Avenue from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America and beyond. How much insulation do you have in your attic? Three inches? Six inches? Well, the Department of Energy recommends R38 for most American homes, which is equivalent to a foot of Owens Corning Pink Fiberglass. So grab a ruler and measure your attic insulation. Then get rolling, because 12 inches of pink fiberglass can help you get a foothold on your energy bills. This motel doesn't have 8-inch masonry walls like Red Roof Inn. Still, you meet some interesting people. You were saying... Well, I grew up in Akron. Of course you did. But when I was 12, we moved to Finley where my... Next time, hit the roof. Red Roof Inns. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF. Right now, for every night you stay at a Red Roof Inn, we'll give you something very special to drive away with when you check out. A brand new Lincoln. Get $5 cash back for every night you stay through February 2nd. Chris Kelly knows a little beachfront hotel where the view is breathtaking, but the prices aren't. Now, where do you suppose she'd rent a car? Budget, where she can reserve a car that's less than six months old in less than three minutes for a very relaxing price. The smart money is on budget. Now you can rent a Lincoln for the smart rate of $99 for any three days with unlimited mileage at any participating budget location. The smart money is on budget. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball, UNLV versus UC Santa Barbara, is brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just the light. Harry Tompkins with Quinn Bucker. We are back at Santa Barbara, where it will be the number one ranked UNLV running rebel against the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos. Let's take a look at how Las Vegas lines up. And Greg Anthony, a key player. In fact, there is one school of thought, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. And he is the one man that 
that Jerry Tarkadian cannot afford to lose. It'll be Hunt, Ackles, Johnson, and Augman, but as you mentioned, one of the real factors about this team this year is that they are about 10 deep, and there's a look at the master of this brood, Jerry Tarkanian. Let's take a look now at UCSB and how they line up, and we mentioned Kelly is very much a key player in this lineup because they have to take care of the ball. Scorers can't score without Kelly. Well, Kelly definitely has to get the ball up the basketball court. I think the two people that we talked about here at the top are proof. I don't think Lovato Las Vegas can play well without Greg Anthony, nor do I think that Barbara, UC Santa Barbara can play well without Kelly. Two very important players for the team. And here is a look at Jerry Pym, who's done a wonderful job here in Santa Barbara. Remember, they've been in the tournament the last three years. They've won 20 games the last couple of years. They've had an awful lot of talent here. This is a young Santa Barbara team. And I think your point is very well taken, Quinn, that they're going to have to play as well as they can play if they're going to win this game. But here is something that really helps them. Let's take a look at the game notes now. UNLV. Their opponent shooting just 38%, and that is what they do that is so effective. They beat it defensively. They have beaten their opponents by an average of 33 points a game, and that just plays into what Quinn had mentioned at the beginning of this program, and that is that they play 40 minutes. Santa Barbara, meanwhile, last to beat UNLV. Since then, UNLV has run off 28 in a row, and they're shooting it a little better in the last three games. So they come up to this game on top of their game. And what they really have going for them here at the Thunderdome are these fans. They are great fans. One big difference here between the Thunderdome and a lot of places in the Big West Conference, and in fact, a lot of places in the United States, is that it's almost all students here. Well, I think that is tremendous. When you get that kind of enthusiasm from the, the students, you know, these guys have unabashed enthusiasm, Barry. So they'll, they'll be into this game. And as you and I have known, this is a very, very, and I say this positively, but a rowdy crowd. Yeah, it really is. And it's a real factor here. There's no question about it. I would have to think what Jerry Tarkini would really want to do is jump on Santa Barbara right now. I think it's important that he jumped on Santa Barbara to try to silence the crowd. I think it's also important to UC Santa Barbara to get off to a good start for the, the reasons that we just mentioned. But he's got some players, like Kelly's never played in this environment before, so he doesn't understand the importance of this kind of game. So if he gets off to a good start, he can play on the emotion. Kelly, a transfer from TCU, he was a Southwest Conference Player of the Year, or Freshman of the Year, I beg your pardon. But he's coming around very slowly into Jerry Pim's system. But as you mentioned, this team is playing better in its last two or three games. You see coming out, you see, and there's the notable man-to-man -man defense. Nice pick and a nice shot by Anderson Hunt. And at the other end, Gary Gray draws the foul, coming up over the top that time. And really taking a major spill. Well, the old head and shoulder fake works here as well as anywhere. You see Gary Gray gives a good fake, and George Ackles goes up. He's all right. He's back up, but a good head and shoulder fake. But more importantly, we got a little bit of a sight as to what Santa Barbara wants to do. You see Santa Barbara wants to do, as you see, again, the head and shoulders fake. They'll push the ball up, given the opportunity, but they really want to stress patience on the offensive end to make Nevada and Las Vegas work. And that is something that they just cannot afford to do. Las Vegas averaging 20 turnovers a game against its opponents. Crowd wants to travel, they won't get it. Stacy Ogman stepped in, kick out nicely for Hunt for three. Anderson Hunt can stick the shot all day long. What, what is beating UC Santa, Santa Barbara? They've got to stop the dribble penetration by Stacy Altman. And another turnover. And here comes Greg Anthony. Three on one if they hurry. The pass ahead to Johnson to the basket. And credit Greg Anthony with an assist. He is the leading assist maker in the country. And remember, he's a converted two guard. And another turnover. Well, that's the thing that Jerry Pym was concerned about right off the top. Unforced turnovers. And right here, we've seen three of them in a row. Two of them have been converted to baskets. There's got to be some patience on the part of the Gauchos. Stacy Ogman underneath. Stacey 
Feldman gets into it a little bit down there, but the, the fans won't let it bother them, and you can guarantee you the Gauchos will just keep right on playing. Well, Vegas doing to Santa Barbara what it has been doing to all of its opponents. That's Anthony. Offensive foul. Credit Greg Anthony. Got the feet down. Played it perfectly. Well, the official right there on top of it. The one thing a point guard must do at all times. Get your head up and turn to see the defense before you dribble the ball. That time Kelly didn't do it. And the official's right there making the call on Anthony. Anthony and Marlon Brando have something in common. <laughs> that is four turnovers now in the first two minutes of this game. Off and out in front for three, and it's ten to nothing. He's not supposed to be able to shoot that, is he? No, that's what they keep saying, but, you know, you get leads like this, it's pretty easy to make that shot. Their defense is really something. That's what makes them so good, and they don't have to have a great offense because they get their offense from their defense. Gary Gray, jump stop. And they're going to need a lot of that. George Ackles, nice pass to Johnson. And that is Davis going after Johnson. And I'll tell you what, he's picking the wrong guy. Yeah, he's picking a man over there to get in, into it with. I'm not sure there was really a lot of intent for a fight there. You can see Larry Johnson's just kind of over there trying to make sure he shakes hands. Now, the high-low action is something that Nevada Las Vegas likes to do. And you see in an effort to go for the ball, Johnson, Paul Johnson in this, gets tangled up with Larry Johnson. So the only intent was Paul Johnson to pull out of it. Larry Johnson just kind of shrugged it off with something that's commonplace. <laughs> We'll take a timeout. 17-24 remaining first half so far, folks. It's no contest. Las Vegas leads it by eight. And we'll be back right after this. Hi, Chris Berman here. Bud Bowl 3 is coming January 27th. And you could win $100,000. That's right, $100,000. Just write down the final score on your official scorecard and send it back. Back, 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 back. Pick up scorecards and team stickers where you buy Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft Ugh. Beer. You might even win an official Bud Bowl 3 Wilson football. Don't pass up your chance to win 100 grand. Bud Bowl 3, January 27th. Nice pass, Chris. Call Pizza Hut Delivery now for the pepperoni pizza deal. Get as many medium pepperoni pizzas as you want for just $5.99 each. So what are you waiting for? Change for the better. Change for the better. Pizza Hut Delivery, make it great. The 1991 Buick Regal Sedan. It's going places. Regal features four-wheel disc brakes and an available 3800 V6 engine. Leather seating areas, concert sound, and anti-lock brakes are also available. Regal is going places in comfort with the spaciousness and view of quality that gives its competitors fits. The new world-class four-door Regal from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America and beyond. 10-2 ball game, UNLV over Santa Barbara, and UCSB is really struggling. Well, they've struggled because, as Barry, as we talked about, that was the first shot that Gary Gray, not only that they made, but it was the first shot they took with more, almost three minutes gone. So that gives you some idea of the kind of defense that Nevada Las Vegas plays, but more importantly, the turnovers by the Gauchos. The Gauchos come out at 2-1-2 on the on the Gauchos, four on two. Gray down the lane. Showing very good transition game that time. Down low to Johnson. Off the glass too hard. Ackles falls. <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, he was all in the basket. Good play by Stacy Augman to get the ball down inside. And the help came over for Larry Johnson, leaving Ackles open. You'll see right there that the help is over there to help out. Earps goes over to help, leaving Ackles free to get to the basket. You've got to get one of the guards to come down and block out on Ackles when the help goes to double-team on Larry Johnson. 
And a lot of people feel that this is a better Las Vegas team with George Ackles than it was last year with David Butler, that Ackles plays more in the jury than team concept as Davis hits for two. Well, UCSB shooting it perfectly. They're three of three. That's the good news. Bad news is they're down six. Johnson, off-balance shot. I don't think Jerry Pim's going to like that too much. No, you don't have to force the shot. You'd much rather make Nevada Las Vegas work than force one up. And the Gauchos didn't get back very well either. Anderson might miss the three, and the battle for the rebound. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be Las Vegas' ball. Michael Meyer coming into the ball game now for... Jerry Pims Gauchos. He's a guy that Jerry feels is really improving. He's a guy who started out without a lot of confidence, but his confidence is growing with every game. Down low it goes to Auckland for the jam. Well, I'll tell you what, it was the pass that made that one because Ackles just caught it and just tipped it right back as uh, you see Auckland was stepping right into the basket. That's what you have. That's what happens when guys play together for some time. They know where everybody's going to be without even uh, thinking about it, just react to it. Herbs tried to get it in low. Ackles got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. Ackles very quick defensively. Well, I think that's indicative of the entire team that he's quick. He's quick off his feet and he's quick to the ball. He gives them the shot blocking ability they have if the ball goes up. But the way they play defense off the dribble in Nevada Las Vegas, it's hard to get shots up. Herbs underneath the gray. And credit Larry Johnson with holding his ground there. Finally comes back outside here, Meyer. Davis won't go, and Gray and Johnson battle for it. It's going to be out of bounds off of Johnson. Very physical game so far. Ref's doing a good job letting the kids play, though. Got a hurry. Finally got it into Meyer. From the corner, that was Davis. And a jumper this time by Ogden off the front rim. Ogden follows it nicely, pulls up again, and has it. Critical mistake. You want to give Stacy Ogden the jump shot, but once you give him the jump shot, you've got to block him out. He's got great range that time, good offensive rebound hoop. Good find, great find. That was from Kelly to Gray. Caught the defense with his back turning. Kelly's a nice player for the Gauchos. Sees the four well, pushes it up. Well, they have had a history of very good point guards here. Carrick to Hart. They had a player named Davenport a couple of years ago, and of course Brian Shaw. Now with the Boston Celtics, another turnover and a putback. Well, they decided to do, on that particular play, trying to get the ball to the guy we were talking about, Kelly. I thought Gray did a bad job not seeing the defense. It happened to be Stacey Augman, one of many players to get a steal for the Rebels. Davis wide open, didn't take the shot. Davis and Gray, remember, averaging 33 of the Gauchos points. Nice look from Kelly again. Meyer had the basket. Anderson hot at the other end. In and out. Kelly the rebound. Here come the Gauchos. Games being played at the Rebels' pace, though. Bob Earps to the basket. Count it. He'll go to the line. You want to get dribble penetration as much as you can. We said Kelly had to have a good game. You see, he draws the defense kick, but this is a strong kick to the hole by Herbs. Larry Johnson just not there in time. I am surprised that the Gauchos have been able to run with Vegas. The, the key is Kelly. He can get the ball up, and you, you always want to get up, the ball up the court as quickly as you can, see what you have. If you've got numbers or an advantage, you take it. If you don't, that's where the decision comes. When do you bring it back? Herbs converts the three-point play. Herbs, the transfer from USC, was a freshman of the year in the Pac-10 conference a few years ago. Overplaying at that time was Herbs. And a jam at the other end. 
by Elmore Spencer. Elmore Spencer. Spencer, interestingly enough, at seven feet, only the second seven-footer that Jerry Tarkanian has ever had at Las Vegas. Yeah, but it hadn't seemed to make a whole lot of no. difference. Spencer's <laughs> come in, you know, he missed the first part of the season, so he, he really didn't have an opportunity to learn all the plays and the way that the team does uh, does things. But he's come back in the game, back into the situation now, and I think what they really got is a big shot blocker and a big body down there. You know, one of the things that Jerry Pim told me before the game is that you can't give Las Vegas second chances. Well, he's done that, and the results. Well, the results is the Vegas has 14, and Santa, you see Santa Barbara has none. That's good athletic ability, good quickness to the ball by the Rebels. Get a good look at the defense here. See, what's critical about the defense is you, it's very difficult to beat Vegas on the dribble, off the dribble. That dribble penetration is what you really need to do to break a defense down. Nice little jump stop that time by Johnson to the basket. But look at Vegas bring it back at the other end. Boy, they make you pay if you don't get back on defense. Kelly's going to be called for a foul. One of the better known moves in all of basketball. If you can take dribble and come to the two foot stop, as you see right here, Johnson does, then you can go up off of either foot and be able to keep yourself with momentum going to the basket. That time Johnson got a nice little hoop over the top. Here's Hunt behind a screen by Spencer, and that is a big screen. Hunt misses the shot. Kelly high for the rebound. He's got a couple of boards, too. The block foul that time on Anthony. That could have gone either way. Well, the real key is the defensive player has to be making himself getting in position. You see right there that it looks as though that there was some movement by Anthony. He didn't think so. The official makes the call. It's the toughest call in basketball, the block charge. Kelly comes out, and Ray Stewart comes in. And Kelly did a terrific job, I think, for Santa Barbara. Well, I think he did, and it's a good move, I think, by Jerry Pym. Give Kelly a break. He sees Kelly is the guy that's going to trigger the offense, so he knows he's going to be need him at, at as much as 100% as he can. You see, Vegas has now changed up. They're in a, what they call their amoeba defense, if you will. It's a little bit of a matchup man. Nice look inside by Myers. The break. Out it. Dribble penetration draws the defense. You see three Rebels around. Little head and shoulder face. Same thing Ray did last time. Gets him a basket. Got the fans going crazy, too. Yeah, that's the one thing that the Rebels do not want to do is let this crowd at the Thunderdome into this game. And right now they are. But, Barry, here's, here's what I think that the Gauchos have to watch out for. You get in a game like this, there's a tendency to play on it from an emotional standpoint, which does take something out of you both physically and emotionally. What you've got to be able to do is play this for 40 minutes. Playing this hard early, can you sustain it is the key. And that's what Las Vegas has been able to do. There have been teams, actually, who have played Vegas tough for a half. In and fact, even into the second half. And then, adios. Vegas just wears them down. Gary Gray with eight points and a couple of rebounds. So far. Nine, nine. And we'll take a time out with 11 minutes, 51 seconds. Santa Barbara has climbed right back into it. They trail by two. Get away from it all in the new Explorer from Ford. If you're looking for four doors and more interior room than any vehicle in its class, if you want four-liter power and push-button four-wheel drive in the best-selling vehicle in its class, if the only thing you want to leave behind is the city, your Explorer is ready. Have you driven a Ford lately? Diet Coke presents Crack the Code for Real Refreshment. January, we got a call from distraught store owners. They just came in and bought out all of our Diet Coke. Relax, sir. They're just trying to crack the code for real refreshment. Crack the code? Game, ma'am. You get these game pieces with specially marked packages of Diet Coke. Then crack the code during the Super Bowl. There's a million prizes, even... Million? What? How'd you get? Crack the code for real refreshment. Diet Coke. With 100% NutraSweet. Imagine a rent-a-car company that delivers a car right to your door and drops you home when you return. That's Enterprise. Here, let me 
me help you? Enterprise, a special rental car company that gives you special delivery. Do yourself proud, make you with beautiful, do it for yourself with Minwax and Wood. Get beautiful color with Minwax Wood Finish and lasting protection with Minwax Polyurethane. So do yourself proud with Minwax and Wood. Well, credit UCSB because what they really, they could have been blown right out of this game right now. And they got themselves back into it. They trailed by two, 11.51 remaining in the half. And a reminder, there's more basketball action coming your way. If it's as good as the action has been all night tonight here on ESPN tomorrow night, you really got some. Nebraska off to its best start in 78 years. That's a long time. They're ranked 14 in the country. They play Colorado. Colorado, good team, and they're getting better. LSU ranked 16. Shaquille O'Neal, they'll go over to Tennessee to play the Volunteers. That's tomorrow night at 9.30, a doubleheader right here on ESPN. Let's take a look at the shooting percentages. UNLV started off with a hot hand, but now it's Santa Barbara. Well, Santa Barbara, again, they've gotten the dribble penetration, draw the defense, you kick, and if you can kick for high percentage shots like layup, you see the result, 67% for UCSB and 45 for Nevada, Las Vegas. Spencer remains in the game for Jerry Tarkanian. So it's Hunt and Anthony, Spencer, Johnson, and Ogden. Defense is a 2-3. You want to try to give your player some rest with that. Anderson Hunt, his second three of the game. But that's what you give up. There's a long jump shot, and Hunt is as good as anybody on the Rebels team is shooting him. And he came in here on a bit of a dry spell for him. That's not good when you got a jump shoot on a dry spell, but when they come out of them, they generally come out of them big. People forget he was the most valuable player in the Final Four last year. Not the big guys, Augman and Johnson. You can see that scrambling defense is just so disruptive. Down low it goes to Gray again. He's got a bigger body than his in front of him to force the turnover. Elmore Spencer credited with that. Jump stop, Davis missed the shot, the follow-up try. Well, I tell you what, I think Larry Johnson got away with one there because it was tipped over the basket, and I thought that was going to be bad uh, goaltender. And Jerry Pym is up trying to say this. Now the shot goes up, and, and, and you see right here when it's tipped again, it looks like it had a chance to go to the basket, but after the replay, I think we had a little better vantage point. It did not. And take another look take here. There's still a discussion going on. The key is whether it, yeah, it had a chance to go. I think it would have hit the rim again. But, you know, we got all kind of camera angles, angles here. Davis, five seconds. 
And again, it's Las Vegas' defense that causes that. That is not sloppy play on the part of Santa Barbara. Yeah, but if you're Santa Barbara, if you're taking the ball out of bounds, you've got to make a mental count in your head, and you can do one or two things. You either call timeout when you get to three, know you're going to four, or just throw it out on the player standing right in front of you, because that's part of the reason you can't get the ball in. Somebody's in your way. Seven turnovers for the Gachos. The Rebels have not made one yet. Anderson Hunt. And he has got it going. <laughs> and the Vegas back up now by 10. Down low it goes to Gray again. Forced it up. Got the roll. Counter to go to the line. And if he makes this free throw, he will have reached the 1,000 point mark. Off the dribble is one of the most critical plays that you can have in basketball. Again, Kelly, Anthony having two fouls, couldn't afford to get another one, and you see the head and shoulder fake there again. Augman never got there in time. Gary Gray gets to go down the hoop. But again, Kelly, and it's Kelly's ability to beat Anthony, because Anthony has two fouls, can't afford the third one going in here before the half. So Gary Gray at the line with 11 points, and interesting philosophy that the Gauchos are using. They are trying to jam it down low. Just take it right to the Vegas big men. Now, as you see, Gary Gray scores 1,000 points. The reason they're doing that is you've got to expose, I think, uh, the Rebels to some foul. That you can't keep shooting jump shots because the Rebels are so quick to the basketball. Augment for three. Won't go. And it'll be off to Anderson Hunt. Santa Barbara's ball. Interesting thing, and again, going along with what we were talking about, that Santa Barbara trying to jam it down low. They've not shot a three-pointer, but they have three three-point plays. Which means that you get people in foul troubles with the conventional three-point play. Kelly, nice little move and a reverse, but it won't go. Gray follows, it won't go. Gray gets it back, puts it up, and has it. That's a big-time effort by Gary Gray. And Santa Barbara's run off five in a row. Back in there, man to man. Anthony for three. Johnson a rebound, foul underneath. They, they got Ackles for being, he was being real active inside, and he just started knocking people around him. And the Fisher got him pushing Sayers down. And Larry Johnson, a very brief rest, will come back into the lineup. And Almore Spencer will leave. Some productive minutes for Spencer. It's good to get the production off the bench. Again, you're talking about a player that has not been in the system very long. Transferred from a junior college, just starting to get to know what the Rebels want to get done. Did not play his first game until the 20th of December. You know, before I forget to, I want to mention Larry Johnson. He's got a lot of impressive numbers, but the one you and I heard earlier tonight may be the most impressive of all of them. Unquestionably. He's in school this past semester. He's got a 3.5, and you hear about all of his basketball numbers. The most important number he can get is a 3.5 going toward that graduation, getting that degree. Dean's List. Tell you what a lot of Las Vegas can do. Go down inside all day long. That's Sayers trying to guard Larry Johnson. It's a mismatch. Larry Johnson is a mismatch on most people, but Sayers, there's no way he can guard Larry Johnson. And they bring Bob Herbst in. As you look at the team fouls now. Herbst is not a real big body either to guard Larry Johnson. Herbst is a, a three in a four's body. Yeah, they're just trying to keep fresh bodies on Larry Johnson. And that's the first turnover for Las Vegas. We'll take a timeout. 7.50 remaining first half. Santa Barbara won't go away. It's 28-25. UNLV. We'll be back. 
Looking to start out the new year in the Toyota is your choice of great savings? Well, you found it at Total Discount Toyota Week at Fletcher Jones Toyota. Right now, 91 sport trucks, 42 to choose from this one, only $69.95. Toyota 4Runner, 30 in stock, all with air, mini with sunroof, AM, FM, stereo cassette, and V6 power. This one, only $16,995. Total Discount Toyota Week ends Saturday at Fletcher Jones Toyota on East Sahara near the Boulder Highway, where nobody's cheaper than Fletcher Jones. I got wrong in rebel fever running up my mind. I got wrong in rebel fever and it feels so wide. I don't need to see a doctor or stay in bed all day. The only thing I need is just to watch those rebels play. I got wrong in rebel fever burning up my mind. Do, 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 do. This college all-star game and has showcased many players who went on to NFL glory. See today's top college seniors shine in the East-West Shrine Classic, live Saturday afternoon on ESPN. On guard for ACC Big East Wednesday, Duke's Bobby Hurley meets NC State's fire and ice combo of Corsi I and Monroe. Then Pitt tries to stop Eric Murdoch of Providence, Wednesday night, live on ESPN. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use rebroadcaster of the transmission of this telecast without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Well, Gary Gray, the guy who really is keeping the gachos in this hunt, 14 points, 4 rebounds, 6 of 8 from the floor, and right now he's on the bench. Well-deserved rest for the 6'9 senior from Granada Hills, California. Doing a good job getting the inside players in trouble. Three-point plays, but he's been able just to score pretty much at will. Sam Robeson, who is a big body at 6'11", but a guy who seems to play a little bit tentative at times. He's from England, and he just has that, that not that tough edge. We talked about that with a player that we saw from Fresno State last week. This does not Forget it. No basket. That's a tough play there. They call the foul. The foul on, on Robeson, but it, it looked like a pretty good play to me. I mean, I know he pushed Anthony, but he, he did it aggressively anyway. Here's a look at Jerry Tarkanian. His team in a basketball game so far. Man-to-man -man defense. But Larry Johnson, anytime you want to get to him inside. Last time these two teams played, Larry Johnson got himself in early foul trouble. Not so tonight. And that's going to go against Ackles, away from the ball. That's his third foul, too. That is a factor. And then the other thing is that it's not a player control, so you're looking at getting a one and one opportunity. That's as good as a turnover, and you go back to the other end. And this is a pretty good free throw shooting team. So Davis with only two points, and remember he's averaging 16 points, 17 points coming in here, 17 and a half actually. Going to the free throw line. Just a single basket so far. Davis 67% at the free throw line. We had a little break in the action here. Jerry Tarkanian trying to be sure that we were in the one and one situation. push off on Bob Erbs. He got in there, but he pushed off to do it. So now we come to the other end, and Las Vegas will shoot a free throw for the first time in this game. First personal team foul number seven. Now what, what uh, center, you see Santa Barbara has to watch, though. Larry Johnson makes both of these free throws. Nevada Las Vegas likes to come out and put a full court press on you. They're trying to distract you. They want to change it up after free throw. Larry Johnson even shooting free throws better this year. He's almost 80%. Our UNLV has really settled down since kind of the opening jitters, you might say. Yeah, they have. You know, in the first two minutes, they had four turnovers since then. They've only had three. 
when they went at those first three, uh, the first four turnovers, UNLV had scored 10 points. So they've settled down as the Gauchos, and, and because of that, they've got themselves only with a five-point deficit here with seven minutes to go. Gary Gray comes back on after a brief rest. Bob Erps leaves, and there's another turnover. They're going to say it was off his leg. And that was just a careless turnover right there. Well, he had a little bit of help. Greg Anthony was got his hand in there, and he just what he did was just make Stewart, Ray Stewart, move the ball a little bit away from his ball, ball handling position, and he lost it. Stacy Ogden right across the lane of the basket, a fight for the rebound, and I take back what I said about ropes, and he went after that one. <laughs> Down low it goes to Davis. The follow-up won't go, but Davis will go to the free throw line, and a foul is going to go against Johnson, I believe. Might have called it on Spencer. We'll see. Well, it's really important that your guards have their head up. And you see right here, you can look in the back of the screen, and you see there's no doubt about it. There's a good head and shoulder fake. Davis goes up, but it's the good heads up pass by Paul Johnson that initiated. Got to keep your head up when you've got the basketball as a point guard. You've got everyone in front of you, so there's no sense not to see the open man. Stacy Ogman will sit, and Everett Gray will come on for Las Vegas, and he has been instant offense when he does play. He's not gunshot. <laughs> He'll come in getting it up. He's only average, playing 13 minutes a game on an average, but he's averaging eight points a game. And as you see, Lucius Davis coming off his most prolific scoring night ever. Three-point game, 30 to 27, 6:30 remaining in the first half. Now Gray thought better of it that time. It goes down low to Spencer for the turnaround. Nice touch. Nice touch. He reminds me a little bit of uh, Bill Cartwright with that shot. Kind of lazily gets into it, but once he does, he's got a good stroke. You got this press. This is a, like a, a one. This is an amoeba. There's a one-one-three. They, they want to stay on the man. Anytime you get a press with one like this, you can get it on the wings, but you want to penetrate as much as you can. Ropes it on the high post for Davis with a man in his face. Davis. Good ball movement by the Gauchos, but they lost the handle. Gray couldn't hold on. Baseball pass to Everett Gray. Might have traveled, no call, and Gray puts it in. But this is the tempo that the of Las Vegas really would like to have, so the Gauchos have got to be careful. They can't play this tempo for 40 minutes with the Rebels. So pick your spots on, on running up and down the court. Jerry Pym playing a lot of people. Actually, he's playing more people than Jerry Tarkanian, and there's one that you gotta buy a ticket for. And that will bring Kelly off the bench and into the lineup for Stewart. And Bob Herbs comes back on for Robeson, who was productive in his time out there. I mean, you see the turnover situation. I mean, it, it brought Kelly off the bench, it brought Jerry Pym off the bench. Again, that's an unforced turnover. Down low to Spencer. Spencer still working his way into the flow of the Las Vegas offense because even though he didn't play a game until the 20th of December, but he also didn't practice until then. Dangerous pass. That's the pass that that defense forces you to throw in, and that's why Jerry Tarkanian plays it, because his players can cover that territory so well. Kelly to the baseline, drew people to him, kick out for Davis, takes the jumper, and it's blocked. Great defense by Everett Gray. Here come the Rebels, three on two. Augman to Gray, jump hook won't go. Gacho's got back nicely, and a reach-in foul from behind. Called on Spencer. That's his third. 
but you want to force the ball up as quickly as you can. And you see it go right there. Gray misses the shot, and Spencer comes in and just starts knocking around. I don't think there's any question about the action going on. Ertz had good position, but you now got Spencer with his third foul. Anderson Hunt will come into the ball game. Let's see who Hunt replaces. Right now, there are six Rebels out there. He'll replace Everett Gray. Go get him, Mike. No, they're going to take Spencer out, and they'll play smaller now. This is a their quick team. They can play a, a press much more effectively now because you've got five players that can cover the court. With Spencer, you've got four and somebody to protect the basket. Another thing I really like about where the Rebels play this year is even on a made basket, they burn the ball back up court. They never walk it up the floor. The, the whole premise here is to keep pressure on you on both ends of the court. Now, if he makes this, watch how quickly they bring the ball up. Herbs with four. across the timeline. And it's a three-point game, and the Gachos just will not go away. They won't. They play good defense, and they've been real solid on the offensive end. Everett Gray, the lean-in, and a block foul is going to be called on Erbs. That's Erbs' second foul. Jerry Finn wants an offensive foul. He's working the officials here. Well, <laughs> with good reason. He knows he's got himself in a battle. Needs every little bit of an edge he can get. So he's trying to get, you know, and the other thing that, that a coach will do is he'll stand up and do that, even sometimes knowing his player may have been wrong, just to let his player know, I support what you were trying to do. Sayers comes on for Earps now for the Gaucho. about how quickly he can make points. 14 and 16 minutes. Earlier this year, he had 19 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks in 24 minutes. So when they say offense, they mean Everick. We'll be back right after this. There are over 3 million people on Manhattan Island every day. Today, there are more students in more schools in more places learning about more subjects with Apple computers than with any other computers on Earth. In a world that's changing so fast it's easy to get left behind, it's nice to know so many students have the power to stay ahead. has shown that if you confine an animal in a small space for an extended period of time, he will become an animal. But put him in a big room with comfortable furniture, full kitchen, and a home-like atmosphere, and he'll become almost human. Something to consider on your next extended business trip. Residence Inn. People who travel for a living live here. Big Monday continues. The Gauchos in a good one against the Run and Rebels. Coming up at halftime, we'll have scores and highlights, including a great fight underway. Ohio State and Indiana in the Big Ten. Back to the game. Well, as Operation Desert Storm continues, we at ESPN encourage all to play sports in its proper context. Our hearts and prayers go out to the servicemen and women of the Persian Gulf and their families. 35-31 ball game, 3.54 remaining in the first half. Gauchos, a lot of different bodies, a lot of different looks. 
Rebels doing what they do. Good ball game so far. Kelly, no place to go with it. Ogwin saves it. Oh, Gray cool. gets it. Here come the Rebels. Crowd wanted to travel. Johnson across the lane. See, that's how the Rebels take advantage of getting the ball up quick because the defense fans out to their man, men, allowing Larry Johnson to be in that position one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody in basketball can guard Larry Johnson down there one-on-one. -on -one. Turnaround in the lane is up and good by Gray, who really has been a factor. Stacey Ogman, little runner, won't go. Fight for the rebound. Johnson got a hand on it, gets it back and puts it in. That's sort of vintage Larry Johnson right there. <laughs> it, it is vintage Larry Johnson, but I think the thing that, that needs to be of concern if you're Jerry Pym, you can't let Stacey Ogman a non-jump shooter drive one, two, drive to his left, his strong hand. Keep him out of the middle, make him shoot a jump shot. Rebels lead it by six. 39-33, two minutes, 30 seconds left, first half. Gary Pym at this point has to be pleased with the way his club is played. They've showed patience when they've had to. You know, our statistician, Joe Sullivan, just handed me a note that really does surprise me. Here's Anderson Hunt all the way to the other end for the slam. Yeah, the, the, the statistic after you saw that turnover there and good steal by Larry Johnson is the fact that Santa Barbara, you see Santa Barbara's out rebound the level 16 to 10. That is impressive. They've got to take care of the basketball through the Gauchos. They, they've been getting the rebound, but they've gotten the ball sometimes and haven't gotten shots. And that is a credit to Las Vegas' defense. Swatting it away from behind was Hunt. Kelly gets it, gives it up to Gray. And Gray, a jump hook over Johnson, and the follow is up and good by Sarah. Anderson Hunt for three at the other end. That's number four for him. <laughs> And he's got 16. So you get two and you give up three. You've got to throw the ball across the top if you can on this zone. But the problem is that Vegas just does such a good job of getting across the corner. Zone. Gray again with a jump hook off the pass from Meyer. Sweet left-handed jump hook. Thunderdome back in it. Anthony won't go. And that is Kelly stepping in. And Kelly's got at least three rebounds in this game. That's Gray ahead of the pack. Oh. And at the other end, they'll make you pay. Everett Gray. Boy, I tell you, you can't be moan or miss in this game. No, no. You, if you make a mistake here, you've got to get back on the other end because i tell you what, the Rebels will. That might have been the easiest shot that Gary Gray had. Now the Gauchos will play for one. I'll tell you why he missed that shot, though, Barry. He's tired. Didn't have enough energy to gather himself and take the ball up into Larry Johnson. Gets down to Sayers with a jump hook rejected by Ogden. And the first half comes to an end. And a well-played first half. The Rebels really had to play well to lead by nine, 46-37. And when we come back, John Saunders will be along to tell you everything that happened in college basketball tonight. Don't go away. We'll be right back. What precision-built truck is also America's most popular value? What truck offers precise fits and finishes and a wider range of electronic fuel injected engines Ford trucks, the best it's Ford Ranger the precision built truck that's widening the sales gap every day more people are driving the best built best selling American trucks than ever before Hi, Chris Berman here. Bud Bowl 3 is coming January 27th, and you could win $100,000. That's right, $100,000. Just write down the final score on your official scorecard and send it back. Back, 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 back. Pick up scorecards and team stickers where you buy Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft Ugh. Beer. You might even win an official Bud Bowl 3 Wilson football. Don't pass up your chance to win hundred grand. 
Bud Bowl 3, January 27th. Nice pass, Chris. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you, all you got to do is call 1-800-CRANK-IT. Get the power that goes on and on and on, yeah. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball, UNLV versus UC Santa Barbara, is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Interstate Batteries, now number one with over 180,000 dealers across the U.S. and Canada. 46 to 37, UNLV leading UC Santa Barbara. If any team can play the running rebels close, I guess it must be Santa Barbara. They have split their last six games. And Jim Valvano, everyone talks about how explosive the running rebels are, but they really play tough defense as what, well. What's so impressive, John, about Vegas is that uh, Sa Santa Barbara's played great. They've played great, and yet they're still down by like nine points. Why? Because of the great defense that Vegas plays. And what they do is they take passing lanes. Take a look over here. They deny this pass. They're going to put pressure on the ball. But Greg Anthony here, he's going to take a look at that passing lane and make something good happen. And there it is. And, and then when he gets it, what Vegas does so well is they, the offensive transition, and as they say, they finish the play off. They're just really an incredible basketball team. Yeah, as you say, it's tough to go to the locker room and say, guys, we're playing a great game, <laughs> but we're down by nine. The second place team in the Big West, New Mexico State, number 23 in the nation, just coming off a loss. They're five and one now because they get the win over UC Irvine, 77 to 60. The Aggies, 26 straight wins at home. Reggie Jordan had 15 points and seven rebounds. Now, earlier here tonight, on Big Monday, we were in the Big Ten. Number four, Ohio State, against number three, Indiana. This one being played at Assembly Hall in Indiana. Jimmy Jackson shoots, misses, gets the loose ball, the pass to Robinson, and he finishes things off. Then, Chris Gent behind the back dribble and the bounce pass to Drake Lee. Ohio State up by 19 at halftime. Bobby Knight takes out his frustration on the chair, then goes to the locker room and gets his team fired up. Second half, the Hoosiers rally. Damon Bailey, the miss. Eric Anderson is there for the rebound, and he is fouled as he sends it home. Indiana pulls to within three, 84-81. The Ohio State holds on, leading Jamal Brown, who had a terrific game, the layup and the foul. Buckeyes win it 93 to 85 is the final there. They improved to 16 and 0. It ends Indiana's 14 game winning streak. 93 85 the final. Jamal Brown a career high 29 points. Now also earlier tonight we were in the Big East. Number six Syracuse on the road at the Capitol Center to face the Georgetown Hoyas. Alonzo Warning back his second game back after missing nine seven straight. Mike Hopkins bearing the three-pointer late to give the Orange the six-point lead. And the Jim Beheim looks alike. We're at it. Ronnie Thompson pops the 17-footer. 58-56. John Thompson deciding who will go to. And likely his best shooter is his son, Ronnie Thompson, who turns, fires, he misses. Matumbo with the rebound. Then the ball is knocked out of bounds. Still Georgetown's ball. Two-tenths of a second left in the game. Matumbo with the tip but it just will not fall, and Syracuse hangs on for the victory. 58 to 56, David Johnson, 18 points, seven rebounds, Matamba with nine points and 18 rebounds. The Orangemen shoot over 57% from three-point land, eight for 14. Stay with us, back with more in just a moment as we continue. On Big Monday, we're in our final game from the Big West. Can the Gaucho pull the upset of the number one, UNLV? America braces for 1991. The sins of the 80s have come due. Now more than ever, a worried nation turns its eyes to HBO, where 1991 is gonna be great. There'll be uncut laughter, unbridled passion, outrageous specials, socially acceptable violence, and the biggest box office hits on television. Yes, HBO in 91, a ray of light in an otherwise yuck year. The VHP picture tube makes it seem like you're really there. When you watch the new RCA home theater, 
It also has picks and picks, so you can watch two things at once in color. The new RCA Home Theater is just another way we're changing entertainment again. Buy the new RCA Home Theater and Blockbuster Video will furnish the films up to a $150 value. Now, for all you rookies out there, the great Nolan Ryan will demonstrate his pitching technique. <clears throat> the Bic Metal Shaver, because I want to look as good off the mound as on. Before the game, it's Bic Metal. After the game, it's Bic Metal. <laughs> the Bic Metal Shaver, because he... The Bic Metal Shaver, because even good old boys want to look good. It's the choice of this right-hander, the Bic Metal Shaver. It makes me look good every time out. That's that one. I think it's only fair that this State of the Company report should have a new state-of-the-art presentation with awesome sound and dynamite graphics. Here we go. That didn't work. Let me see. Business is always trying to make some things better. But one thing they can't. Mr. Barr, Federal Express delivered that London shipment early. Great, huh? Federal Express. Absolutely, positively the best in the business. Welcome back. The runner rebels with a nine-point lead over the Gauchos at halftime as Big Monday continues. And let's check on the number two team in the nation, the Arkansas Razorbacks, on the road facing Florida State. Florida State also had played UNLV earlier this year. Pat Kennedy looking for the upset. Todd Day hits the first of seven first-half three-pointers for Arkansas. He had 16 in the first half. Aubrey Boyd with a pass to Chuck Graham. Arkansas's lead is cut to five at halftime in the second half. Arkansas with the pressure pays off Todd Day with the steal and takes it in for the jam. Arkansas by 10. And then Day with the lob pass. Lee Mayberry one handed off the glass. 102 88. Nolan Richardson says perhaps we are number one. But right now you're number two. 109 to 92 the win. Todd Day 30 points and nine rebounds. And Jim, there's a matchup coming on February the 10th between Arkansas, number two, UNLV, the team we're watching right now, number one. Well, most people feel that. Uh, uh, UNLV is going to go through this season undefeated, and well, that's how they get through tonight's game, I guess, at Santa Barbara. But I do think there's one game they can lose, and that's the one at Arkansas. Just think about what that's going to be like. Arkansas has the talent. If Oliver Miller doesn't get in foul trouble, I think that Vegas can go down in that game, which would remind me a lot of the game in the late 60s when Houston beat the great UCLA, UCLA team when Elvin Hayes played great for Houston. But then when they went to the tournament, oh, they came back and buried him. I think that could happen in this situation. And Day and Mayberry may be the only guys in the backcourt who can match up with Vegas right now. Let's continue. East Tennessee State against Tennessee Chattanooga. East Tennessee State ranked number 12 off to the best start in the history of the school. But today, trouble. Derek Kirst with a nice move. Jim, you loved what you saw in this game. 32 points. Keith Nelson with a jab. Ties it at 74. Then Levert Threats on the line. 59% free throw shooter and hits it. Tennessee Chattanooga takes the lead. Last second, East Tennessee State with the chance, but no good. Tennessee Chattanooga, a winner, 76 to 74 is the final. Derek Kirst, 32 points and 12 rebounds. East Tennessee State, their first loss in conference and just their second loss of the season. Texas Pan American against number 15, Southern Miss. Easy win, 88 to 72. Darren Chancellor had 23 points. Clarence Weatherspoon had 19 points and 11 rebounds. Davidson against Virginia. Virginia the win, 71 to 47. Anthony Oliver had 16 points. Of course, Terry Holland is now the athletic director at Davidson. Used to be the coach at Virginia until last year. Marquette loses at North Carolina State, 89 to 76. Rodney Monroe, 23 points. Points. Chris Corciani with two new ACC records, most assists, 861 passing Grayson Marshall of Clemson, and the four steals tonight gives him 276 on the season, passing Tyrone Muggsy Bogues of Wake Forest. Stay with us. Big Monday continues in just a moment. We are in the Big West, but right now, let's take a look at some more scores on this Monday night of college basketball.
When you visit Arizona Charlie's, you can expect the warmest hospitality, the friendliest service, and the best values in Las Vegas. There's around-the-clock fun for everyone, from sports action you can bet on to cashing your paycheck and instantly winning up to $5,000. When it comes to entertainment, Arizona Charlie's Palace Grand Lounge features the hottest acts in town. Arizona Charlie's, a great place to stay, a great place to play. 740 South Decatur. Why are a lot of people driving new GMC trucks these days? Mainly because they want a tough truck or van that isn't afraid of a little dirt. But they're also discovering that at Desert GMC, they can have fuel economy, power, and styling starting as low as $86.95. And with 8.9% financing and rebates up to $1,500, now there's only one question left. What color would you like? Visit one of the three Desert GMC truck dealers. New trucks for today's new lifestyles. continues obviously the gauchos have to get some offense going but how do you do that against that stifling d you know it's interesting john about vegas's defense not only do they play great man to man but as they did in the first half if they get a lead they go to that amoeba defense jerry tarkane is great in biology too <laughs> it's hard to beat no matter how you play larry johnson is a guy that you would think you have to eliminate down but how do you do that you can't that's one of those things you can't do. He does such a great job of posting down low. I've not seen anybody be able to stop him yet. Yeah, he certainly does look unstoppable at this point and for the last two years. Stay with us. Big Monday continues in just a moment. We're getting to the second half in the Big West. The Gauchos still very much in this one against the number one team in the nation. Okay, let's just say that this is about the size of an ordinary hotel room. Then this would be about the size of a room at Residence Inn. Recap, ordinary hotel, Residence Inn. People who travel for a living live here. In time, all definitions must be revised. But when it came to redefining luxury, it wasn't a Webster, it was Oldsmobile, the all-new 98. Now you can have anti-lock brakes, fuel-efficient power, computerized suspension, technology found in cars costing thousands more, which by my definition could be the greatest luxury of all. And you can always take a Webster at his word. This is the new, the new 98, luxury redefined. Generation of old. Shark. What goes into some of the world's most innovative business products? Shark thinking. It's why this high-resolution VGA notebook computer fits in your briefcase. Shark thinking. It created Sharp's most advanced high-speed copying system. Shark thinking. It made the world's first desktop full-color fax a reality. And the Wizard Electronic Organizer a necessity. The one way to meet new business needs with new technology is... Shark thinking about business. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball, UNLV versus UC Santa Barbara, is brought to you by Oldsmobile. Stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. And by Bud Dry. Why ask why? Try Bud Dry for refreshment that's beyond question. Barry Tompkins with Quinn Buckner back at the Thunderdome where the visiting Rebels lead the Gauchos 46-37. Quinn, I've been meaning to talk to you about this for a couple of weeks now, and I don't think there's anybody more qualified to talk about what the Rebels' place in history is so far as how they compare with the great teams because you were probably on the team that most people consider to be the greatest basketball team ever. How good is this Las Vegas team? <laughs> Boy, they're, they're very good. I'll tell you what makes them difficult to play against. 
is that they're good defensively on the dribble. Dribble penetration breaks penetration breaks down any defense. And the team in 76 could do it because we had Bobby Wilkerson who could guard anybody, which allowed me to play freely. With Stacy Augment on this Nevada Las Vegas team, he can guard anybody, he can get steals, and it frees up everybody else to play less than full on their own man, and that's what allows them to get easy baskets. Seven steals in the first half, and that equates to points at the other end. Let's take a look. Some of the highlights from the first half, and one major highlight was the play of Gary Gray. 18 points for the Gauchos down low. Well, he really came and played strong. He was aggressive the entire game. He kept the ball alive when he had to, gave some head and shoulder fakes, but he just had the presence of mind, take the ball back up strong. He had a, a very good line. He was 7 for 12, I mean, um, he's 8 for 12, and that's what you would want to get out of a man like that. But what Vegas will do is they'll push the ball up, and Anderson Hunt, was the MVP of the Final Four for that very reason. He can stand there, catch the ball, and shoot that shot as well as anybody in the game. Now, what happened here, this is the end of the half. Now, what you watch, if you watch number four, Larry Johnson, watch his right arm. You see, he hit Gary Gray. Gary Gray was tired, and he didn't have the strength to be able to stay up. That was a big turnover because it gave a little push to the Rebels going in at the half. Four-point turnaround, really, because it was two at the Santa Barbara end and two at the other end. Here are the numbers at the end of the first half. Both teams shooting it reasonably well. Santa Barbara shooting it well at the free throw line, 9 out of 10, and that really is a big factor in this game. But that turnovers, that's the number that really hurts Santa Barbara. Well, I, I tell you, that hurts them. You see the three-point numbers. You and I talked about this. There are 12 turnovers by Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara. Of that, seven of them are steals by the Rebels. So now you're talking about an opportunity to get the ball immediately and convert it to a basket before the golf shows can get back on defense. Talk about the individual numbers in this game. Anderson Hunt, we mentioned that he is a streak shooter he came in here in his last three games he was only shooting 29 percent well look what he's done here today yeah, four threes in the first half he, he's a shooter and they have the mentality i'm going to make every shot you see he's got 18 points and you got larry johnson with 10 but a shooter is going to shoot the basketball regardless he figures the only way to get hot is to keep shooting larry johnson a very quiet 10 but as coach v pointed out he's a presence <laughs> Look at Jerry Tarkanian. Jerry Tarkanian okay, really no. likes this team because he says he's got some really quality kids on this team. You know, it, it makes it fun for a coach to be around a group of guys that you like. I think all of us have been in environments where we don't like one person or the other. But when you talk to Jerry Tarkanian, he legitimately likes these kids. He likes their attitude. They just play hard. There's that cross-court pass you were talking about earlier. Kelly to the baseline, gave it up, went right through Bob Oak's legs, and Davis misses a three. That was their first three-point attempt. Foul from behind, a reach-in on Davis, I believe. I mean, Davis gets a wide-open jump shot. You don't get many of those when you're the Rebels, and Davis missed it. Tried to come up, the right way to come after the basketball, but the official making the, the appropriate call, foul on the left arm by Lucius Davis. Man-to-man -man defense. And right to the basket, Larry Johnson. Offensive foul, no basket. Well, Larry Johnson gets the ball out here. There are not many people his size can guard him. You see a go to the basket, but if you, you're watching the official felt that there was a reason to call an offensive foul, Larry Johnson disagrees, but I disagreed all the time on offensive fouls because I didn't get to score many points. All I can say is that takes some nerve for Lucius Davis to stand there. Here's the steal from Ogwin. Race to the basket. Ogwin over Kelly. Oh, 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 oh. With a stamp of approval. Ogwin's got 11. And just like that, an 11-point lead. Here's where you've got to be careful when you're uh, the Gauchos because this is when Nevada Las Vegas likes to go on tears coming out at the start of the half. They have done that so many times. Utah State actually played them to two points at the half, and that was in Las Vegas, and they wound up blowing out Utah State. You talk about presence on the court. When you've got somebody 6'7", long arms, great anticipation, perfect defensive basketball player, Stacy Ogman. You see, he stays in the passing lane, and, and he'll, he'll come up with a steal, but just by his ability to stay in the lane, as you looked at on that particular play, Anthony gets the foul. 
and we'll take a timeout. 18-20 remaining in this ball game, and Las Vegas in front now by 11. It's 48-37. The Rebels over the Gauchos. My grandfather loved the unknown. I want a sure thing. I drive a new kind of Oldsmobile, the all-new Bravada. Perfect for this jungle because it's got smart track. A new anti-lock braking and all-wheel drive system that automatically sends power to the wheel that needs it. So I'm ready for the unexpected. Whether I'm traveling across the river and into the trees. This is the new generation. Or just visiting your old man in the sea. Bravada, engineered for the unexpected. Why does a man have to do what a man has to do? Two, three, four. Dry, but dry. Cold filtered for smooth draft taste. Dry brewed for no aftertaste. Refreshing proof that men still know what they're doing. They say you get what you pay for. At McDonald's, we insist on it. For your good money, you'll find just one offering here. Good food. McDonald's. Always good food. Always good value. Running Rebels by 11, 18, 20 remaining. Now let's take a look at that shot. Well, we talked about those steals. Stacy Augman had three at the halftime, and you'll just see what the long arms and anticipation of Stacy Augman, and then he caps it off. I mean, this is what you call a real stamp. <laughs> I, mean, I thought he was going to barely get to the basket, but he was able to throw that one down hard. So the Rebs by 11. Rebs come out again. They, what they do is on the baseline, out of bounds, they're going to a 2-3, and they'll move it into their amoeba where they keep a man on the ball, just adjusting to wherever the ball goes. And they just take the passing lanes right away. They, they have good anticipation. That's a sign of a veteran club. They've seen all the sets. They know the angles, and they, they play the angles, and they just make good use of their abilities. Johnson. Jackals to the basket, finger rolls it in. But they're really jumping right out on Davis now. You can see Ogden's right in his pocket. Oh, they, they are. They, they're going to try to get the tempo up here a little bit, particularly down on the forwards, because Davis can make shot, Johnson can. See, in Nevada, Las Vegas can switch on you, but they've got players all of the same quickness. Stacey Augman makes that work for them. There's that cross-court pass, and the jumper from Davis is no good. Woo! Got to get urged over the top. I <laughs> well, I'll give him credit for that one. He went at that with some authority. You see the jump shot. You look coming to the right side of your screen. There's in, no question about it. Herbs comes and slams it home, but he moves Eccles and Johnson out of the way. <laughs> no small task to that. <laughs> no ta small task at all. You know, another interesting G Wiz number. I'm, in, I'm into G Wiz numbers tonight. Neither point guard has scored in this game. They've been so busy distributing the ball. That's the, that's the main reason for that. Eccles out in front. <laughs> Johnson. That was Johnson and Johnson, and what they really needed was Johnson and Johnson. And Kelly got in there whooping a little bit, and Auckland just pushed him away. Kelly might have been the instigator there. Yeah, basically, Larry Johnson was just telling Kelly, get away from me. And, and Kelly, a little man, but with some heart, decided he wanted to stay close. Not a good idea. Uh, you'll see right here. The shot is taken. Ackles felt good on that last play he made, so he felt he had some, some good feeling, so he takes this one. Now, Larry Johnson intends to sling the ball away from Paul Johnson that time, and you can see where Larry Johnson just basically tells Kelly to get away from him. Johnson held onto the ball, and that is Paul Johnson held onto the ball, and Larry Johnson just threw him down with it. 
And again, a little exchange of words. G give the Gauchos credit. They're not backing down. And, and also give the Rebels credit for a little maturity here. No, they're not going to get in a fight. They really don't want to. What they will do, though, is they'll, they'll play hard, and, it, and if it comes to an intimidation aspect of the game, the Rebels will do that if, if you let them. That's why I say give the Gauchos credit, but the, neither team really wants to fight. It's more like, I'm staying here, I'm going to play, so are you, let's just play the game. Stacy Ogman's line for the year. He's just such a complete player. The, the only thing that he's really he needs to work on is his jump shot. Everything else he's got, he's pretty solid on. Good defender. Uh, you know, passes the ball well, runs the court extremely well. You and see? he can take it away from him. He's done that four times tonight. The other thing about him is you saw him shoot those free throws. He's shooting 80% at the line this year. He was 67% last year. <laughs> and there he is again. <laughs> Kelly penetrates nicely. Give it up to Erbst. <laughs> Kelly again takes the jumper this time and gets the ball. The thing to remember about Kelly, he's a kid from San Francisco. He's not going to back down. He's played against tough crowds all his life. Uh, oops, the tough rebound. Las Vegas back on defense, and Johnson forced that one to the basket. Drew the foul, but it could have gone either way. Larry Johnson is the guilty party. That'll be his third. Forcing the action here is Paul Johnson. You see Larry Johnson tries to take two players and then Fisher just felt that he was not there in time. Brings the crowd into it. So Paul Johnson at the free throw line. You see his numbers. He started off very slowly this year, but he is getting back into the offense now. Got 17 against Irvine the other night. That was his high for the year. One out of two and a fight for the rebound. Sayre's got a hand on it. He's already got three offensive boards off the bench. But the Rebels come away with it. Well, there's a lot of contact. In this oh, game. yeah, it's, it's getting a little rough inside. Oh, that's a good call. That's an intentional foul on Larry Johnson. I want to tell you something. That's totally uncalled for. That's his fourth. That's totally uncalled for. And even more importantly, yeah. the fact that it is number four. Johnson goes over to the official who made that call, and I, I'm almost certain what he's saying to him is, I'm all right, don't worry about it, it was just one of those things. Well, he also wants to try to let the official know that they call the game on both sides. You and I had mentioned the game started to get a little bit rough, and because of the first, the, the, the little uh, encounter that Larry Johnson had with Paul Johnson. Spencer will come in for Jerry Tarkanian's Rebels. Eight-point ball game, 52-44. I think that's going to go against Sayers. There's a look at Larry 
Johnson. Yeah, he can't be too pleased. But he's a little frustrated, too. Anthony, his first points of the night. Two points, two. Now, this is an ideal time for the Gaucho team to take up some of the slack with the, the, the number one player for the Rebels sitting on the bench. So now you've got to take the ball inside. Now, Gray has not been a factor in this second half. Kelly, rejection by Spencer. He took on something a little bit too big for him. Greg Anthony has a pretty good argument here, I think. When you take the ball inside, though, Kelly's got to realize that Spencer's going to come over, which means Spencer's man, as you can see right in the screen, Sayers was open, so you've got to get it to the open man because there's no question. Spencer will the, protect the middle of the court. They just got that into Johnson. Kelly directing a little traffic here. They clear out now. They're changed. Man, uh, going into the zone. Two, three. You can swing the ball and pin the man on the baseline side and get a jump shot. You just watch the way Las Vegas helps out on defense. Anthony stepped in front of the basket and drew the foul on Johnson. And Anthony wants an intentional foul. And it's pretty close to an intentional foul. Well, I talked about where you can find the passes on the baseline side. Anthony anticipated that pass, and that's what happened right there. Got his hand on it, and coming down on the other end, he's trying to look off. And what he's saying is Johnson never really had a chance to go for the ball, so it should have been called an intentional foul. The Fisher saw it differently. And we'll take a timeout with 14-11 remaining in this one, and the Rebels in front by 10. It's 54-44, and we'll be back right after this. of the world is water, but it's not all like this. The American Paradise, United States Virgin Islands. Call Pizza Hut Delivery now for the pepperoni pizza deal. Get as many medium pepperoni pizzas as you want for just $5.99 each. So what are you waiting for? Call the change for the better. Change for the better. Pizza Hut Delivery. My dad knows all about space vehicles. He directed me to the new Oldsmobile Silhouette. Its looks are stellar. And the interior is perfect for the enterprising family. The modular seats pull out easily. There's a place for everything. Compared to other forms of space travel, Silhouette is the logical choice. Right, Dad? Eminently logical. This is the new Silhouette. Travel in space and style. Ten-point game. Las Vegas 54, Santa Barbara 44, 14-11 remaining in the ball game. A couple of members of the Vegas Rebels are in a little bit of foul trouble next Monday on Big Monday. It'll be Syracuse at Connecticut to get things started in the Big East. That'll be at 7.30. And then we will move to the Big Ten where it'll be Iowa looking to get themselves righted. And they have to play at Illinois. That'll be at 9.30. And then Quinn and I will be in Logan, Utah. We're following the running Rebels here as they play at another very tough place and a place where there was a lot of words and even more <laughs> flying last year. Yeah, but they, they've come come back and, and talked to each other, got that squared away. But it'll be a hard-fought game at Logan. Anthony missed them both, and Gray with a rebound. had a look. Oh, 
Coming out of the timeout, a lot of Las Vegas again went to their amoeba. They're going to force the outside shot. They're going to make you beat them from the outside. Yeah, they, and they really have effectively taken the inside game away in the second half. The only thing that I think that uh, Santa Barbara can do is start trying to penetrate, but you've got to protect the ball. Another steal by Anthony. Ahead it goes to Hunt. So that's the penetration off the dribble. They didn't let get Kelly get it. They See, they know that that's what Kelly wants to do, beat you off the dribble, and now they're just taking it away from him. Kelly actually had a tough line in the first half. He did have five assists, but he had four turnovers, and he's had two the last two times down the floor. start penetrating you're playing the ball outside that's the first penetrating move that they made the entire sequence the ball was going around the perimeter you got to go into the middle Sayers has really been a factor in this second half he got the ball in this game I should say off the bench four points not a lot of scoring production but he's at three or four offensive boards now he draws the foul well on Spencer that's his, his fourth so they, Gary Tarkin has made a decision to bring Larry Johnson back in, who also has four. So now what do you do? Do you try to take it right to Larry Johnson? I, there's no question about it. The first thing I try to do is expose Larry Johnson to his fifth foul. Now this is something, though, that I, I talked to Jerry Pim about before the game. He said last year he could do that, but now what happens when you try to take it to Larry Johnson and he is in foul trouble, Ackles will come over and help out. Then Ackles' man has to be free, and that's what you, your team has to recognize, that there is another man that's going to be free. Johnson on the offensive end. Well, one of the things that he did was he put uh, Erps in, because Erps a little bit of an offensive player, so he, that way he does expose the Johnson to a foul. And up and good from three once again is Anderson, hot his fifth. And the Rebels with their biggest lead, 14. Myers for three. They say two. They call that a two. Woo. Looked like a long way to me. Well, it sure looked like a long way to me, too. And Hunt gets the baseline, is cut off. Anthony for three, it won't go, and the rebound goes down to Davis. And there they do get it down low to Gray, and that's the goaltender. <laughs> the, the interesting thing about it is that everybody comes and gets the ball, but guess who gets this? Look at the, who gets the block. That's Greg Anthony that comes <laughs> after. <laughs> well, that's when you know you got a tough team when the guard is going up goaltender. Here's Larry Johnson. Puts it on the floor. Can't get the shot. Gray has the rebound. And this time they beat him down the floor. It's the first time I could remember the Gauchos beating the Rebels down the floor. And Kelly couldn't make him pay for it. Well, that's because he beat two of the Rebels down the floor, but Larry Johnson got down there and was just got in possession, and Kelly just never realized that Larry was going to be there. Anderson Hunt up oh, with it again. He's for another one. That's six threes. Shooting a raindrop. <laughs> I really like that expression. <laughs> Good choice here. You've got to slow the ball game down. This is the kind of run Vegas like. They'll get on 8-0, 10-2 runs. Bob Erbs can't get it to go. Gray gets it back. He missed the putback. Gray has missed a couple of cripples. There's Johnson in traffic. That cannot be stopped. It really, you know what he does so well? He turns and puts his body on you and it backs you up. If you're Watson, he does a good job getting positioned. But watch, he'll turn and put his chest right into Greg. So he puts it right into him so he can absorb whatever force or whatever foul he's going to get. They still have control to shoot the ball. Idris Jones comes into the game now for Jerry Pim. And Jones at one time a very good three-point shooter. But he's lost confidence in that shot this year. He just can't seem to get one to fall. We'll take a timeout. 11.09 remaining in this one in Las Vegas. Now in front by 15. That is their biggest lead. We'll be back right after this. Hello, I'm 
I'm Randy Sutton from First Muscle Therapy Group. Before this message, I want to say one thing to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Thank you. Pain is not something that you have to live with. First Muscle Therapy Group is the medical office that makes a difference. Douglas Therapy is to heal your body with a friendly professional staff to ease your mind. Have you been hurt in an accident? Call us. Are you having back problems or arthritis pain? Call us. Let First Muscle Therapy Group make the difference for you. Medicare and most insurance is welcomed. There's a third world country filled with hungry people. 20 million of them. It's not in Africa or Asia. It's within our own borders. Every month, 20 million Americans go hungry. But soon, the Boy Scouts of America will be going door to door, collecting cans of food for those in need. Your donations can make a world of difference. Jordan. Yui. Magic. The inside story on some of the world's greatest athletes is on the NBA Today. Tuesdays on ESPN. On guard for ACC Big East Wednesday, Duke's Bobby Hurley meets NC State's fire and ice combo of Corsi I and Monroe. Then Pitt tries to stop Eric Murdoch of Providence. Wednesday night, live on ESPN. As Operation Desert Storm continues, we at ESPN encourage all to play sports in its proper context. Our hearts and prayers go out to the servicemen and women in the Persian Gulf and their families. Barry, what, what I'm looking at right here with 11.09 to go, I talked about it earlier, you and I have discussed it. The legs of the Gauchos seem to be going away. They can't get to the loose balls as they were getting to when they had the emotion. They can't push the ball up on their, their follow throughs. It's all of those kind of things that makes you think Nevada Las Vegas just wears people down. They just keep coming at you in waves. You know, again, I go back to something Jim Dalvano said at halftime, and that is that you just can't ignore Larry Johnson. He's going to be a presence. He's going to make his presence known. And look at his line tonight. And this has been a very quiet Larry Johnson. Quietly with 12 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals. And not to mention how many, you know, changes of shots hurries because he's been in there in position to block a shot. Stacey Ogman in the lane. Couldn't quite get the roll. The follow is there, but it might be basket interference. <laughs> just kicked him off that one. <laughs> oh. He's not pleased. I mean, that's a sign of a competitor. I mean, he's got a great club, and they're up right now. 14 points, and he's still competing, trying to get another basket. You know, the coaches are just like players. They just compete. That was Idris Jones, and as we said, he, he's just not shooting it with confidence, and you can just tell in his motion. Everett Gray right back in your face at the other end. Count it, and a foul will go against Idris Jones. I tell you, they just make you pay. If you think for one instant about a shot that you missed, you're done. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You don't get back on defense, and Idris Jones gets, gets over there too late, and Everett Gray takes it over there. And, you know, Idris Jones knows he should have gotten there much quicker than he did. He missed a shot. Didn't do a very good job getting back defensively. We can see how the Rebels are shooting in the second half, and again, that could be accounted for by exactly what you said. They get to the bas I mean, they get to the ball quicker. Now you're seeing they're starting to get transition baskets. Well, Jerry Pim told us earlier that only one quarter of Las Vegas' points, and I think this is interesting, come when they're in a set offense. Well, that's a, for two reasons. Right there, you see the travel on Ray Stewart. You know, you take him out, take, get him in the game, and he travels. One is they don't get into it a lot because their defense creates some offense for them. I think conceptually it's the right idea to try to get them in a half-court offense, but it's their defensive ability that allows them to stay out of offense because they get them on fast break and turnovers. So they lead it now by 19 with the ball, and this has been almost typical of the way Las Vegas has beaten people this year. But, you know, let's, let's not kid ourselves. If they get into a half-court set, they still got Larry Johnson to go to. Oh, yeah. Lucius Davis with the basket. Off a steal. So Stacy Ogman cranks a three, and Bob Earps has the rebound.
Devils have forced 17 turnovers. Their season's average is 20, so they're just about right on. Maybe a little ahead. Johnson for three. That may go against the Earps, I believe. Fourth personal foul on Earps. The other thing that's happened is now you're looking at going into the one-in-one the, the one -one situation. So, you know, the Gauchos have hurt themselves in a number of ways. They don't have the leg to make the shot. They don't have the leg to get over to get the basketball. Now they've got themselves in a penalty situation. But, you know, you can't really give up. You've still got to try to force the ball inside. You've got Larry Johnson still with four fouls. Now, you can get him in foul trouble. Mind you, you're down here 17. But you can get yourself back into the game. Stacey Ogden. Now has 12 points, sort of a routine game for Stacy Ogman, too. Got a half a dozen steals. <laughs> Stacy Ogman, as good a player as he was last year, he's a better player this year. He's shooting free throws better. He's shooting 10% better from the field. He's going to need the field goal percentage shooting, Barry, because going to the next level, they're not going to run plays for him. So he's got to get them off of steal, and when he get foul, gets fouled, he's got to be able to take advantage of that by making the free throw. But is there such a thing as just a natural shooter, or is it something that Stacey Ogden could go in the gym and shoot a 1,000 jumpers every day and improve? Yes, to both of them. There are people who are just natural shooters. They work at getting becoming better, but Stacey Ogden can become a better shooter by going in the gym and working at that. I think what happens, and I, I'll tell you what happens. When you're a defensive player, and I, I got a little idea of what that used to be like, you, you tend to focus on, on becoming a better defensive player like Stacey Ogden, and it takes away from your concentration about being a, 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 an offensive player. That's all, it's a matter of focus. So we got Gray who fouled Gray, and earlier we had Johnson who fouled Johnson. <laughs> It's an easy game. You only have to memorize eight names. <laughs> and they have really taken Gary Gray effectively out of the game in the second half. He had 18 in the first half, and now he has four in the second half, and two of those are at the line. Off the hands of Anderson Hunt, a rare mistake. But the other thing about these Rebels is that they just don't make a lot of mistakes. They're not going to beat themselves. This is, again, a veteran club. They know each other. You know, they know the, the offense. They know how to get each other involved. There's another one. Everett Gray steps in front of that one. Try to go baseline. The man went by the ball. Down low, it goes to Johnson. Forget it. Nope, short. But Johnson kept it alive. Actually, it was Ackles who kept it alive, and now they kick it out for Anthony. George Ackles, jump hook in and out. They'll have another try. Everett Gray missed it. And finally, Gary Gray comes away with it, and Everett Gray hammers it. Jerry Tarkanian, I mean, he, he pulls for his players. I think what he's disappointed there. Every Gray has worked hard, got himself a good shot inside, he just missed it. And because he missed such a close shot and you're coming off the bench, you know you got to score a point, I think, in every Gray and his anxiety of trying to prove he can score, just got it in and got called for the foul. You know, the other thing we should point out, too, we mentioned earlier, in fact, at the very beginning of this program, that how deep Jerry Tarkanian's Rebels were this year, and he usually does play 10 players, but Chris Jeter is back home. He pulled a muscle in his back, and he's usually one of the early players off the bench for Jerry. And Travis Bice, who's another designated three-point shooter and an excellent shooter, has had a stomach flu, and he has not, even though he is here, he has not made an appearance yet tonight. Well, again, that's, that's the depth he has. That's why I think he's better this year than he was last year. He's got more players that can play different positions, but, you know, he, he just goes so deep. Anthony all the way to the basket, bodies all over the place, and let's see who fouled it. There are a number of explosive players, but off the dribble you can't get beaten. And Kelly comes over and tries to get it across the back, but there's not much chance you're going to get. 
Oh, no, they're going to get Anthony as he goes, but they make the foul call against Sayers. Greg Anthony will come to the free throw line. 84% free throw shooter this year. He's got six assists in the game. Only three points tonight, but he has made his presence known. One out of two. Now Greg Anthony has become the definitive point guard. He leads the nation in assists. And I think it's easy to forget about the fact that he played his first year at Portland State and was the leading scorer in the West Coast Conference. Well, it's a little bit like Stacey Alderman becoming, I think, a good defensive player. You do what you do best or what's best for the team. And that's what Buffalo players have done. Nice little back door right there. And Gary Gray now has tied his career high at 25 points. Rebels really looking down low, trying to get the ball into to Larry Johnson. That was, that was Kelly, and here's a race to the basket with Anderson Hunt, and Anderson Hunt rejected it beautifully. <laughs> How do you like that? I thought that uh, Kelly had done a good job protecting him with the, the ball, with the basket, but Anderson Hunt just waited. Right here, Kelly times this beautifully. Going to his left, he's able to get the steal, but Anderson Hunt looked like he was out of the play. Oh, he got up early and just hammers it. Now they got up, he stayed up. <laughs> Now at ESPN we have an interesting highlight. They show what we do is we show every one of the starting fives on the Rebels dunking. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's intimidating to a guard? Yeah, or blocking shots. Augment for three, a little short with that. He gets it back, puts it up again. No. Johnson. No legs. There he is. if I could borrow Larry Johnson's body for just a few hours. Oh. Just go to the beach. Most of us be glad he's a nice guy. Yeah, you're not kidding. Because he could be a bully. <laughs> Real easily. Take a look at Larry Johnson at the other end off the miss. Well, you see, he's agile. He was standing under the basket, almost under the backboard, and was able to get out, out to get that. May, would make a great tight end. He's got great hands, you know, good strength, good foot speed. Well, the Rebels lead by 17. And simple fact is, Santa Barbara's not played badly. It's just that they're in there against, in one man's opinion, unquestionably the best team in America. Oh, it's, it's, they've been uh, like unanimous number one team in the polls. I'm not sure. It was just one yeah, man's probably opinion. Probably not. I, just, I didn't want to editorialize. <laughs> Myers misses everything. And you're right. You are looking at a very tired group of gauchos here. Yeah, they, they expended a lot of energy just getting the lead. You know what, it wears out when a team is playing defense like that against you the entire time. You have to work so hard to get open just to catch the ball. Then you have to work to try to beat your man on the dribble. And then once you do that, Vegas covers up so well. So it, it, you expend a lot more energy than you normally do. Spencer got it back. Third try, almost brought the basket down. They'll go to the free throw line as he drew the foul on Robson. Well, you see Spencer's left-handed. He goes to it, gets the shot up nicely. But you see how quick he is to the ball? He gets it again, and he just tried to shoot it too quickly. And that's why he was mad at himself when he tried to, to dunk it, because you get a chance for an easy basket on the Rebels Club. you got to knock him down. Spencer with four points. You have the substitution number four, Larry Johnson, back in. Larry Johnson will come on, and George Ackles will leave. Spencer's got a nice touch. Contributor, yeah, he does. He's got a nice touch. I don't think they're going to run much offense for him right away, but eventually he'll get into the flow 
and then you can count on him to, to get your points because, he, as you can see, he's got a good stroke, so he can shoot free throws if he gets fouled. We talked about the fact that he is only the second seven-footer that Jerry has ever had at Las Vegas, and, and the first seven-footer is not a household name. i got to tell you that, Brett Roman. Yeah, it's definitely not a household name. I remember <laughs> Brett, but <laughs> Brett didn't scare you. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Kelly still can't buy one. Robeson, go big fella. No. Jerry was saying that Robson is still learning the game. Going to be the fifth personal foul on Spencer. As George Ackles, after a brief rest, will come right back. Spencer leaves with six points. Tell you, he walked by here just a moment. That's a big, <laughs> a large man. fellow, isn't he? Woo. It's just what the Rebels needed, another <laughs> player yeah. that could play. You know what amazes me about Jerry Tarkin? He gets these good players, I mean very good players, and, and one of the toughest jobs in all of sports is to get a great group of kids and players and make, and make a match, play together, and that's what Jerry Tarkin has done. He, he, it, they mesh. Uh, they play hard, and they don't, you know, want anything from any of the other players. And I think that's what you have to say is a committed asset of Jerry Tarkanian. Yeah, and I think the tone is set by Stacey Ogden and Larry Johnson. I think it was enhanced by the fact that these kids decided to stay in school instead of going and taking what was it amounted to a substantial amount of money. Very great. Missed the layup at the other end. They had a three-on-one, and now this could be this could be ugly. Rejected by Ackles, count the basket. I don't think George thought that was goaltending, and I'm not, I'm not sure myself. Well, you see, Jerry Tarkanian is not exactly sure. Nice play inside. You get the ball inside. Ackles go up and get it. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not a ref. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. Oh, great Beautiful pass. ball movement. Ackles to Johnson underneath. Come a little bit of uh, basketball surgery here. I'll tell you, it's the best looking team I've seen in a long time. I did see Arkansas earlier in the year, and of course they are headed for a showdown at Fayetteville, and that's that's not an easy place to tee it up. No, but I, you know, I think Vegas take their chances against anybody, and I think I, I'll take my chances with Vegas against anybody. Yeah, and they also seem to play well in the big games, obviously. Robson fighting for that one. Three on two now. Anthony tried to get it to Ackles coming down the center. A nice hustle that time. Going away from the ball by Kelly. We'll jump off the track. 312 remaining. 79-59 UNLV over UCSB. We'll be back. Fresh taste of Bud Light. It won't fill you up. Never let you down. It's called Drixorum. A powerful 12-hour cold medicine that at one time you couldn't buy without a prescription. Today, you can. 12-hour prescription strength Drixoral. It works just as hard against colds as it always did to relieve the misery of congestion, sneezing, and runny nose. For 12 full hours of prescription strength relief, Drixoral is all you need to know. 160 horses. That's what Chevy S10 packs into the biggest V6 engine ever put in a compact pickup. Enough power to help switch more truck owners to Chevy last year than to any other truck. The move to Chevy is becoming a stampede. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Now 
it's easy to win with the heartbeat. Barry Tompkins with Quinn Buckner back at Santa Barbara. We're at the Thunderdome. Anderson had a big story for Las Vegas, although they have many stories. 26 points, six threes, 19 turnovers just about on average for them, Quinn. Well, the, the real story with the uh, Nevada Las Vegas is that they just play hard. They, they don't care who they play, they just play hard. And that's what will, will enable them to, to win most games because now they're not playing against the competition. They're playing against themselves and their, their ability to get better. I, I sincerely believe that with Nevada Las Vegas, the only person that can really be, the only team that can beat them is themselves and having a mental about them too is that when one or even two of their starters doesn't particularly have a great game they can compensate well that's what i mean by it so it's not like you can necessarily take one player out of it. i do think that that anthony is the one player they can wow. ill afford to lose but they do compensate when one of the players doesn't score or even two of them don't score somebody else picks it up there has been such a common school of thought amongst coaches players media just about everybody that there never again will be an undefeated team in college basketball. And I don't know, you start looking at this team and you really think it can happen. It's so hard to say. I, you know, I'm subjective in this. You know, I got a little bit of feelings in this, but the reality is uh, records are made to be broken. And this is a very good basketball team. If they stay focused, good things is go are, are going to happen. To them. Substitutions now for Jerry Tarkanian. as Travis Bice and H. Wellman have come on. And, and I'll tell you what, folks, they don't drop off a whole bunch with these two guys in there either. The Bice is shooting a three-pointer on you when he gets his shot. But uh, already in the game is H. Wellman. My man, H. That's H a, without a period. That's a sweet name. <laughs> what, do you, what do you suppose you call H for short? <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Robson rejected by Ackles. Look at that. I mean, this game is, is, is the Rebels to win, and, and they got Casey on the jumping out of bounds to save that as Everett Gray knocks down a three. And did a little in your face to the fans here, too. Everett Gray transferred from Riverside Community College. He's another guy can shoot it. <laughs> Is that redundant? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Because uh, Jerry Tarkanian was concerned about this game. He said this is the toughest place in basketball for his club to play. He doesn't know why. Uh, one of the reasons he cited were the fans. And again, you have the students here on campus, and they, they, they get after it. But he said this was the most difficult place for his team to play. So that's why he wanted to wait until it was well in hand. I'd have to say that Jerry might have waited quite a bit longer than he had to here <laughs> before it was well in hand. That's Joyce down low. Blocked nicely from behind by Carter. But Joyce will go to the free throw line. Now it's on 33. 
Sam Robson. Bobby Joyce on the line for the Rebel shooting two. Joyce's first try, too hard. Maybe the other sign of a team that you can tell that they're, they're going to be good for any prolonged period of time is I've watched Nevada Las Vegas in practice, and I haven't seen anybody practice as hard as they practice. And, and they practice the majority of the time. I mean, if they practice 40 minutes, 35 of them are, are on the defensive end. There's another turnover. H. Waldman leading this one all the way to the basket, tried to finger roll it in, couldn't do it, drew the foul. H. Waldman today is 19 years old, so celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday, H. H. I like that. J. Pym taking an opportunity here to, to educate Kelly about how this is the way this league is. I mean, you've got to play against some good teams, and, and I'll tell you what, there, there are some good teams in this league. But I don't care where UNLV plays. No foul, yeah, it doesn't no matter. No <laughs> yeah. Not this club. Ooh. See, the other thing about the team in 76, it was not this deep. I mean, we were lucky if we could get play out of maybe two other play people off the bench. I mean, consistent play. I mean, we had spot players. You know, Coach Knight is extremely good at getting players in spot situations. But Vegas can go down and get three or four extra people, if you will, and they can play for, you know, long periods of time. Yeah, I think the, the most impressive thing, one amongst many, actually, about this team is, he, and we mentioned this at the beginning of the program, but he can go 10 deep, and he's going to play at the length of the floor, and he's going to make you work, and you're working with five against his 10. Yeah. You, you know what, Barry, today, he didn't press. You know, he never came out and pressed full court. Meyer sticks a three. Give the Gauchos credit. There's no dog in the Gauchos. They're still playing hard here. Jerry Pym doesn't play that. <laughs> no, you, you can't come here and not play. Play hard all the time. Good night tonight for the Grays. Everick had 14 and Gary had 27. How'd the Johnsons do? I think Jerry figures he's got this one won, huh? Jerry always looks like there's some concern. I mean, somebody's not getting it done. Always coach me. But that's happy. I can tell that's happy. <laughs> that's happy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He implodes with happiness. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Joyce, the follow. We got it back to a 20 point lead. And Everett Gray got a hand on it. No, you know what? He faked it actually, and Meyer yeah, ended up let it, go, go, let it go off his hand. Got blocked. Incidentally, see Vegas wearing those black shoes. They call them war boots. That's Melvin Love, another JC transfer, who came with Spencer. Stewart, nice pass on the wing <laughs> to Idris <laughs> Jones. Waited for the big guys to clear. I thought he was going to get three seconds waiting on him to come down. <laughs> H. Walden couldn't quite get it off to a teammate. Here comes Stewart. Three seconds left. Myers too hard. And a foul with two seconds left. <laughs> up 20. Gets his name in the paper. <laughs> I like Travis because his man is Charles Barkley. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you can really see the resemblance. <laughs> so this one is over. And UNLV has won another one and kept the streak alive. And this is an impressive basketball team, folks. They win it 88-71. And a very tough place for Jerry Tarkanian's team to play. They came away.